people being so passionate about something, mm -hmm. it makes your life so much more exciting. Mm -hmm. Being around people that allow you to feel heard yeah. is an amazing thing and it's hard to find. I've seen benefits of the power in strength training mm -hmm. translating into my dancing. Move more to live more. You just kind of let your body do what it feels like it needs to do. I saw results and then I got to my goal. Yeah. Why stop now? Connect with your body always. Miss Caitlin Moyer. Hello. Well, what's up, girl? Ooh, feeling good after that kettlebell flow. Oh yeah, we did. A, we just did a kettlebell flow, guys. Can you want to explain what a kettlebell flow is? Kettlebell flow. So you have a series of movements, and you flow them together. For us, we like to count. Yeah. So you have to count through it. We did some it difficult some moves choreography, today. Guys. It's choreography. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. And I've I've had uh, Nate learn how to count. Oh, he already he already kind of knew how to count. Kind of count. But we've gotten a lot better at it. Yeah, choreography is like hard. Like. I feel like dance and like choreography and like what is it, six, seven, eight, I don't know, one, two, I don't know. How, what are the counts? It's like literally. We, we had to do a one and two today. A one and two. And then we had to oh, hold seven, we, we, eight. We graduated. Uh, we graduated. Come on and hold it seven, had been eight. a year. We had to upgrade yeah. and we, we upgraded. It looked good. Yeah. 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 What do you, do you think? kettlebell flows can be just like a good workout or are they just for fun? Cause like a lot of people, we, I just see them on Instagram and stuff. They look cool. So they're a great workout yeah. if you are using like the proper weight. Yeah, heavy weights. We, we kind of like, we, we kind of experienced that today. We did it with yeah. a lighter weight to make sure we could do it, yeah. you know? But then as soon as you like add, it gets your core in a different way. Yeah. Like feeling that like rotation and, and finding that range of motion. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a great workout. It's a great functional workout. Yeah. Yeah. How do you stay okay with like, you told me you're doing like four workouts a day. I thought I was crazy. I would do like a run and then a workout, but four is a lot. So I, I pace myself. Yeah. Usually if I'm doing that many workouts, mm -hmm. it's like one is like true workout. My brain is like How many in workouts the mode. do you do like a week? A week. Mm. So right now I'm doing 75 hard. Okay. So Can you every day, 75 yes. Hard is? 75 days, 75 days you are doing two workouts a day, 45 yeah. minutes each. Uh -huh. One should be outside. Right now I'm doing one more weighted weightlifting mm -hmm. workout. Usually one is dance, yoga, or running or cardio, yeah. little less weights just so then my Which body has a break. Outside? The running. Running stuff. Yeah. yeah. Or if I can't, and I'm going to a dance class, then the mm -hmm. first one would be outside and I'll do like kettlebell flow mm -hmm. or something like that. Um, depending on, or I'll do a workout out in the balcony. What inspired you to do 75 hard? Ooh, I had, um, well, fit stop where okay. I work. Um, it's a gym that I work at that, Shout um, out fit stop Santa yes, Monica. let's go fit stop Santa Monica. We have our unstoppable series. Mm -hmm. So our unstoppable series is a six week series mm -hmm. and you are trying to get to your goals. So you have to set your goals, um, within fitness, mm -hmm. within just lifestyle, mm -hmm. um, nutrition, all of that recovery. And I was setting my goals and then somebody started talking to me about 75 hard mm. and I was like, well, right now I'm trying to train to be a yoga instructor. So there's a full book I need to read. Sure. 75 hard includes reading, reading. too. 15 pages. Yeah. Okay. Um, reading. And then also there it's the end of summer. I wanted to take a break from drinking. Mm -hmm. So that too, no drinking. Also, you're like allergic to drinking. Also, yeah, I just, I wake up early. It just doesn't help any aspect. Do it makes like me recover. Um, at, on occasion, if it's like really fun night out, like yeah. my friend Zoe, we went out for her birthday. Yeah. Fun night. But like, I don't usually ever overdo it. Mm -hmm. So like, but yet, yet it, again, it's easy it for makes, you though. It's easier to stop. Yes, it's, it's easy easier to, to me. Yeah. Like okay. we went out in uh, San Diego. I have a great time. I'm a dancer. Yeah. So I can go out. I can dance. I don't need any alcohol and I'm, I'm still same energy. Yeah. Uh, will I stay out as late? No, probably not. which is probably a good thing when I have to wake up at 4am the next morning. San Diego Trek was, uh, 
It was a lot. A hurricane the next day. Yeah. So, also, LA people were soft, dude. This hurricane was like that was not a hurricane. Rain. It was not a hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, take I, the, I, re- I, like, I retract that statement. <laughs> it was a tropical storm, um, ish, yeah. and it was just driving back in yeah. the rain after three hours of sleep. Yeah, was probably was just tough. the worst part about it, and then. The earthquake scared me more than anything. What's raining like in uh, Wisconsin? Rain in Wisconsin, it was just like that. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's usually I just have, like that. Yeah. I'd say um, being in a blizzard mm-hmm. and in the snow, uh, especially with my car, mm-hmm. yeah, it was not good. I had um, a slug bug. I had a yellow slug bug. Yeah. So you had that, a bug? Yeah. Yeah, that was my I first could car. I see you with the bug. And so I would skid out sometimes, and yeah, all that stuff on the snow and the Wisconsin ice. So that all? was a lot. Oh, do I miss Wisconsin? I miss Wisconsin summers. Okay. Yeah, I went back um, a few weeks ago. It's great seeing family, going to the union. Yeah. Um, union. I feel like, yeah, the the student union. It's like right on the lake, okay. and it's beautiful. Yeah. You always go for like sunset. You have brats, burgers. You are you chill. a lake girl? Like, are you a, like a, a wakeboard? A, like boat chick yes i loved that growing up i did yeah. <laughs> i did kneeboarding story kneeboarding kneeboarding was fun i feel okay. like they like had like a little see so you're on your knees and you strap yourself in it's like definitely like before oh, you yeah, yeah okay. before you would do like wakeboarding uh-huh. i did kneeboarding um story when i first started to learn how to water ski mm-hmm. I had the skis that your rope mm-hmm. that was in your hand was connected to your skis, and then somebody was on the boat hanging on okay. to it. So they had to let go in order for you to be safe if mm. you fell. If you for fall sure. and they don't look, yeah. you are drugged by your skis. Oh. So that happened to me. Ow. They weren't paying attention, and I was underwater, and my skis were in the air. And the boat was dragging me. And I was probably Were like eight years it? old. No, like I had let go because I fell. It's so connected it's to... connected to your skis. Oh, that's dangerous. So, yeah. That's super dangerous. That was, yeah, so that was my first experience water skiing. I think one of my favorite things to do on boats like the wake surfing. Have you done that? Oh, yeah. I I have not done that In since time. being an adult. Oh. So It's fun being an adult I, and I, doing it. Yeah, I need to try that again. That's something that I... I don't know. I like doing all these like new things and like activities and same. I have a ton. Of, yeah. Super sick. I think that's why we get along a lot, but, um, I have friends at home who have like kids now and they're just like grown adults and like, you know, yeah, and I'm, like, just, like I'm not going to go wake surfing. What? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I, what do you think is important about just like still being a kid for as long as possible? Or do you think it's important or do you think it's necessary or what's your opinion on it? I definitely think it's necessary. Okay. I feel myself getting more nervous about taking new risks and yeah. like different things. And I think that scares me more hmm. than the actual thing. Like my mean? nerves. Okay. Like the fact that I'm more nervous, like going on a hike than hmm. I used to be three years ago. Hmm. That's do weird. Get, do you get nervous going on a hike? I went on a hike in Malibu uh-huh. two weeks ago. Yeah. And we had to like use ropes and like climbing up and I was fine on the way up. And the whole way I was thinking about the way down, I was like, how am I going to slide down this mountain? Cause I've slid down multiple mountains and my heart would stop. And I'm like, oh my right. God, I'm just going to start rolling. Yeah. But the way down was fine. I was completely, I, there was nothing to nothing worry about, about, but I like, it's that like fear that I like to fight. Yeah. I like like taking that risk and like continuing, mm-hmm. like feeling like you're doing something hard, something you either haven't done before or yeah. something that scares you. Um, if you get comfortable and you're not doing mm. that, then you're not living. I love that. Uh, I was surprised that you were down for a night hike that one time we did. Oh, my God. Yeah. So we <laughs> went on a night hike. It was not supposed to be as late as we went. Yeah, but we like, started at like 8 p.m. We started at 8. So the sun yeah, was down. It was gone. It was dark. Um, midway through the hike, though. There was this man. Well, we didn't know it was a man. We didn't guys. know what so it was. We... I, I saw this figure just like coming with like, it looks like long arms. And yeah. I was like, what? And then I was like, uh. And, and someone's just screaming or like yeah, yelling really yelling. loudly. And this I figure... was freaking out. <laughs> yeah, I know you were. You weren't. <laughs> oh, when you like gripped hard on my shirt, I was like, oh, yeah, I don't know what that is. And then he kept coming up. 
and then it looked he was having poles like yeah. ski poles or hiking poles, hiking poles i was yeah. like okay he's not that and then he stared at me directly because he didn't hear me because he had headphones on yeah. he was on a phone call we looked at each other and we just like paused and they're like and then we kept going yeah well we couldn't <laughs> tell like I was thinking the worst. I I am a true crime fan, and I know how many true crime stories that there are that people just like yeah. disappear. And I was like, this man is gonna kill just us. kill us right now. <laughs> I don't know if these things are he has in his hands. I don't know what he's screaming. I don't yeah. know if he's saying right now. And then I realized he was on the phone, and my heart went back to beating again because it had stopped. Would and... you be down to do like uh, a long one, like one of the ones I just did? Yeah, if I um. Uh, gave people my location okay. so they could track where I was. I think we um, were going to do another one in a couple weeks. Okay. You just need to give me a long warning beforehand. Like I said, I get more nervous about these things now, Yeah. but I'm willing to do them. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I said yes to the last one, but I feel like we need a little bigger troop than just me and you. And let me probably tell people where we are before we yeah. go. Water too. Probably, yeah. Probably water would water. be good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was just telling Caitlin earlier today that I went on this like 10 mile last week or a few days ago. And, um, one, I was on shrooms and then, uh, two, there was a ton of coyotes. Like, like I can't believe like, (laughs) well, you knew that I was scared. I was telling him the whole way when we were on our night, I I was like, that was poop. That was poop. Like that was, uh, (laughs) would you think that was a dog or what do you think that was? The one that I was worried about on ours since it was a small trail. Yeah. Uh, there was bats. There was a lot of bats. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I, was in fr- those. I was in front, and so, like, I just saw them fly out. I didn't say anything because I was just like, there's yeah, a lot like, of bats yeah, here. Yeah, you're, you're, you were, like, mentioning it as we were on our way back. You're like, did you see all those? I'm like, yeah. no, thanks nope. for letting me know now. <laughs> Sick. Oh, uh, what's the hardest part of 75 Hard? Because it, you make it sound, like, super easy. And I know a lot of people, actually, most people I know who started it never finished. Yeah. I, the workout part is the easiest part okay. for me. Um the not drinking i mean i don't it's, like go out that often you, yeah. yeah i'd say like the sweets mm. because i like chocolate yeah. so like i found other ways i was telling you like i have a yeah, whole g- concoction give, give them the secret give them yeah, the secret yeah so you have your either collagen powder or your protein powder okay can you explain what collagen powder is like is it just like collagen in powder form yeah there's like other things in it okay. like so there's like mine has protein in it okay. still so i'm still getting the protein benefits it has other um vitamins um, but mainly it helps your nails, skin, hair, mm. all that stuff. stuff. Yeah. Okay. Which like, I don't eat much meat, so mm. I need, I need extra. Um, I'll put that some almond flour. Um, usually, uh, I have a little peanut butter powder in there. I didn't mm-hmm. tell you that before. Um, and then I'll put some okay. egg whites, Yeah. mix that up, uh, coconut wa- or coconut milk, unsweetened coconut milk. And then, um, I'll mix all of that up. Mm-hmm put it in the microwave so i'll just do it in a mug yeah and it's a little like mug cake that's just like protein filled okay so uh, I've been oh s- i will put ahead. like cacao powder usually in addition to like the flavored uh-huh. collagen and it makes it a little bitter but like so good tastes like chocolate chocolate cake? yeah chocolate cake just not it's as like good. a brownie but for me i'm like it's good I love it, yeah. you'll take it i wouldn't make it for anybody feel, else though i feel like the palate adjusts though yes it does because I used to be a super big like ice cream guy and then I would have less and less ice cream like each night and then I just wouldn't crave it at all. Yeah. Like if you keep tapering off and tapering off versus like if you make it normal in your palate every single time, I feel like you crave it. Yeah. I've definitely been on the journey for like six years of changing my Wisconsin uh, palate of foods from a dairy filled Culver's concrete mixers People like love every cheese other over night. There, right? Aren't they oh, known yeah. for cheese? Cheese curds. Like, I mean, yeah, it's so good like mm. when you have it, but I'm lactose intolerant and I just kind of put up with it growing yeah. up. Like, my mom found out when I was like a child and I would bring juice boxes to kindergarten because I couldn't have the milk. Yeah. And then eventually it was just like too much of a hassle. And my kindergarten teacher said my juice box was too big compared to everybody else's milk. So I couldn't bring it anymore. Oh, so so you I had just to start suffered. Milk? Yeah. Oh, that's shitty. Very interesting. That would suck it. But that's just like a Wisconsin kid. You you have yeah. to like you have to have the cheese, you have to have the milk. I, I loved um, Munster cheese. That was the only What's cheese. What's Munster cheese? Munster cheese. It's like a white cheese that has like um, an orange kind of casing on the mm-hmm. side. I called it Monster cheese. I didn't really. Monster, not I, Monster? Yeah, okay. I thought it was Monster cheese. Okay. And that was the only cheese I'd like, like just eating 
Yeah. Itself. Like, so I wasn't a huge cheese Bes- fan. Besides the... But cheese curds were great. What are cheese curds? I don't think I've had one before. So it's cheese curds. So there's two different versions of cheese curds. There's just cheese curds or like fried cheese curds. There's cheese curds that are just like curdled cheese. Okay. That's so fresh. You get it at Curdled the f- cheese. I mean, I don't know what like, curdled means. So, um, they're just like in little like curds like have you ever had like a fried cheese curd or like no. seen a cheese curd wow no. so like they're all just like misshapen like little like, things you of cheese much. you don't need it no it's so good oh, yeah, <laughs> you go to the farmer's market you uh-huh. get fresh cheese curds they're all like like slimy okay. and like if the cheese curd like makes a squeaky noise so you know noise. it's good and fresh really? okay. yeah i'm gonna have and to get a cheese with curd with dill on it oh i, I do so like dill. good what's still popular on a lot of things i guess a lot of things yeah, yeah. what well, made you i guess like tr- transition your diet besides like the lactose intolerant like because it's kind of like completely different not just yeah. no cheese yeah um, I mean, living in California, you kind of switch things, but also when I, I don't was know living, about California, I feel like LA, <laughs> LA, yes, that's very true. But also living in Japan oh, and going to the that. grocery store and not being able to read anything that was mm. like processed. Did you, I, did you have the, the Google? Yes, I did. I did. Thing? I had multiple different okay. ones to like go and it took me two hours the first time i went shopping to like get what i needed because i was just like you know trying to like see what everything was Mm -hmm. and even though i'm like that's obviously milk but i need to see why there's 10 milks and what the difference is between all these milks guys if you guys haven't been to a different country where everything is in a different language yeah it really messes with you like i would go into a japan grocery store and be like what is everything but i also miss it really yeah what do you miss about it I miss going and just shopping for the things I know what they are because I can see them. Uh And so like, I wouldn't eat the processed food. Mm. I'd be like, I know that salmon. Yeah. I know that is, I mean, there wasn't as many um, vegetable options Mm -hmm. as like you would see here. They're just Mm -hmm. different, I guess. Um, But yeah. Do you eat raw fish? Yeah. Yeah. So their, their grocery store, like sushi is like great. Oh, so good. Yeah. Like we made, so good. we made me and my buddy who lives over there made homemade poke bowls like almost all the time. Night. So I would get this, um, thing of salmon and I, that was like my go-to. Mm-hmm. And I think that's where I started, um, eating less meat mm-hmm. and more seafood because mm-hmm. it was so fresh and yeah. it was like the same price. Did you feel it? Did your body feel different? Yeah. 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 In what way? Um, I feel like I felt like I was processing my food better. Mm -hmm. I definitely grew up having a lot of like stomach, you know, all all the, the girl, the girl issues, you know, where you always have an upset stomach after your meal. And like, I hate going out, (laughs) like going out to eat. I would always have like an upset stomach after going out to eat. Yeah. I I don't know if it was like the oils because I'd even like order healthy things or order the salad or order basic things. Vegetable oil is like so bad for you. Exactly. And like every place uses vegetable oil. So once I started just eating less like processed food Mm -hmm. and um, making sure I was just choosing my grain, Mm -hmm. my vegetable and my protein Mm -hmm. as set. And so I've been doing that ever since. I'll make, I'll always meal prep my dinners. I just choose a different grain, a different veggie and a different protein. protein make sure to eat the eat the rainbow eat so the you rainbow. don't you don't choose the same veggie every week that's a big thing i try to change up the vegetable i use every week i usually just eat the same vegetables yeah see it's sometimes like, you got to change it up because you get different well, benefits i know I, I just like i'm a routine guy yeah what's your favorite vegetable Ooh, um go to i go to brussels sprouts brussels all sprouts. the time how do you make your brussels sprouts i literally put it in a pan and <laughs> i um or i'll put it on a pan the best way to have them is i'll just drizzle a little like olive oil or yeah. avocado oil on top i'll put my seasoning there's this like um italian seasoning i get from trader joe's that mm-hmm. has like dried tomatoes in it and all the stuff mm-hmm. i'll sprinkle that on top yeah. a little salt and i'll literally just throw them in um to the oven and that's that. I, I, super simple. Yeah, my mine, um, mine's not like I, that. I, I'm definitely like somebody that like. That's impressive. I don't really. I don't really have a picky palate, where I'm like. A picky palate. <laughs> yeah, we're like, if it tastes like the earth, like I'm still like it. Yeah, 
I make my Brussels sprouts. I'll do like a uh, maple sriracha. Oh, That's like my let's go-to. see. Like you're like, okay, we're gonna make this good. Tastes good. If I'm cooking for other people, totally. If I'm cooking for myself, yeah. I'm like, yeah, I've seen you I eat some need... stuff. I'm just like, you're like, there's no seasoning I, to that. Yes, yeah, yeah. I'm just like... yeah, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> it, I've been trying to convince myself to treat just like food as fuel versus food as like enjoyment and entertainment because like a lot of people associate I don't know like cheese curds with like entertainment. Like it's yeah. it's a it's a, a memory that Definitely. it gives it's them nostalgic. joy. It's nostalgic, right? And a lot of people connect food with nostalgic things yeah right like s'mores right oh um 100 percent. camping you're having a good time with family and friends yeah. and this and that you're like oh like a uh, s'more sounds yeah. so good but yeah. it's they're shitty for you for sure mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> i had a full summer where we did like bonfires and, and s'mores. s'mores we had a s'mores crew it was great but like i i ended up having to like find alternatives for my s'mores to like make it a little healthier it was yeah. it was not really possible but do you like espresso martinis at all Yes, so, I do. There's this place called Lily's that I went to um, the other night, and they have so it's a regular espresso martini, but they top it with like this marshmallow foam type of deal. Okay. And it tastes like a s'more on top, and oh. I was just like, "Whoa, like, that was game good. changer!" I wanted like three of them, and mm-hmm. I was like, mm. "Yeah, I had to be careful with espresso martinis because the um, caffeine, yeah, that, and then like also the dairy in them. If it's there's no dairy." Oh, Sometimes. Some, some do. Some do. Some it do. It depends. A lot of them don't, though. Yeah. A lot of them don't. If it's, like, light-colored, then you'll see. Mm-hmm. What do you I call did. it? Since your last time you were on, which was, like, April 2022. Yeah, like, over a, a year ago. A lot have changed. A lot has changed. We were at F45, mostly. Yeah. And yeah. we're both not at F45 anymore. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> Very much so. Not, on, not at F45. Um, I guess, why aren't you at F45 anymore? And what have... What are you doing now? Like, what 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 type of training are you doing, and uh, how is it at Fit Stop? Like, could you explain the type of training you're doing? Yeah, so it's a lot more. Um, it is still the house of functional fitness. House of functional fitness. Okay. Yeah, or the the home well, of functional fitness. What's your definition of functional fitness? Functional fitness is movements that will, like I'd say, they're, you're not using a machine. Mm-hmm. You're they're movements that are going to help you for your day to day, move more to live more. Mm-hmm. They're functional. You're going to pick up a box. You're going to pick up a weight like you'd pick up your box, mm-hmm. right? You're not going to go and bend over incorrectly, pick it up, and then you're going to mess up your back. Mm-hmm. You're going to learn different movements that help you do your day to day tasks. Sure. Um, it's strength and conditioning. Mm-hmm. Um, we're using barbells. We're lifting heavy. We're finding our three rep max five rep max yeah. all that stuff your strength gains in the last few years have yeah been kind of crazy. i don't think i had i'm lifting so much more than i was before and um it feels great mm-hmm. and it feels, body feels easy good. yeah body feels great when i was i'd say when i was at the last few months of a 45 my knees were feeling it mm. i was doing a lot of hit mm-hmm. a lot of fast paced movement in addition mm-hmm. to dancing mm-hmm. and being able to do lift sessions where i'm really slowing down i'm having long periods of time so like some days it's 18 minutes mm-hmm. to build your heavy deadlift yeah. and i'm slowing down i'm caring about my form i'm not just like oh god yeah. i have 40 seconds to like get the weight on this bar get going get my reps in and then because that's kind of how it is at 45 for sure. yeah so being able to slow down knowing i have a lot of time to get mm-hmm. my sets in i'm being more cautious of how my body feels mm-hmm. um making sure i am lifting like a weight that feels first off challenging mm-hmm. and also safe for my body that day depending yeah. on the day um, How do you balance out, I guess, like this heavy weight training as well as like the functional training with like dance? Because like you kind of have this, I don't know if the words dichotomy or um, these cross training. Not necessarily. Like you have these two sp- career paths that yes. you're doing, which is basically like fitness mm-hmm. and, and dance. dance and strength training and fitness like usually tighten you up like a lot Mm -hmm. and dancing you'd be super flowy yes and everything like that like how do you balance out the two to uh, for both of them not to suffer i guess yes so stretch (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Stretch, i'm also i'm also getting my yoda yoga i said yoda yoga certification for a reason i love yoga i love um getting my body in kind of like a flow state Mm -hmm. 
moving through things, feeling my joints, finding the stability Mm -hmm. and mobility while still getting like a good workout. in. I feel like that helps. Um, but also like, so that's part of it. I'd say I've always been very graceful, Mm -hmm. very flexibility has always been easy for me. Mm -hmm. So it's more, um, I've seen benefits of the power in strength training mm-hmm. translating into my dancing. I'm, so? I'm a lot stronger. I can hit movements harder. I can hold things longer. I can, um, I'm just more like sturdy in my mm. body versus always being like free flowing mm. where when you do a deadlift, hit. you can't be free flowing. You yeah. have to pop that weight up. Mm. And so when you say translate. Hit, hit a movement, what do you mean? Um, so let's say like you hit a drum beat, mm. you have to hit that movement just like that that note in the music yeah and if you can't stop or you can't find dynamic in your movement yeah it's not going to translate it's not going to look like your body is making that music Mm. it's gonna it's not gonna it's gonna look like somebody is lip syncing and it's not matching up it's just Uh, not matching up and that's what your dancing will look like that's a good analogy for sure yeah how's uh how's the dance world been um i feel like i just talk to a lot of dancers now, but I'm not a dancer. And so it's kind of cool to see like everyone's perspective. Yeah. I feel like it's up and down. There's a lot more gig work happening Mm -hmm. versus, um, music videos Mm -hmm. and TV shows and all of that. Do you think that's because because of the strike? strike? Okay. Yeah. Are you, are you union? I'm non-union still. So I, I've had the option. Um, I've still stuck to not to not join the union. I'm I'm there's more job opportunity usually. Okay. Right, obviously not right now because mm-hmm. they're on strike. Um, higher paying jobs. Mm-hmm. You're also supported by the union, so that means you will get benefits. You'll get health care. All of that. So if you, get you do, yes, if you do a certain amount of gigs to qualify yourself and in to stay in the what, union. What would be a certain amount of gigs to qualify for like health care and stuff like that? Do you have any idea? I'm not 100 percent sure what it is mm-hmm. now. Um, but you also have to pay your dues, so you have to make it worth it to pay your dues are to the expensive? union um if yeah if yeah. like you're not if like you're not monthly? doing often i have no clue how this works i'm not 100 percent sure i haven't looked <laughs> into it yet because i'm not in it but i've been in other unions okay. where yeah it's a it's a quarterly due mm. um but yeah you have to really look into it and do your pros and cons and know like how far you're willing to push mm. to get yourself into the union and then consistently get gigs yeah um but obviously right now we're on strike so You're not just, the time yeah it's obviously probably better for non-union yeah yeah what's your favorite type of dance right now because i does it change Ooh, it does change sometimes it depends on kind of what mood i'm in um i will always love a good contemporary session where i feel like i'm just like releasing my emotions mm. But taking like a fun, on, sexy, yes, like, I mean, that is, it's like therapy. It's, you just feel like, do you ever drop? Into I feel like, like I'm like comfortable piece? in my own skin yeah. when I'm doing that. Do you ever drop into like a contemporary piece just like at home by yourself? Oh, I do it in like the middle of workouts sometimes. Oh, yeah. Like I literally okay. did that this morning. <laughs> the girl working out with me was like, what oh. was that? And I'm like, the music is on and I'm yeah. going to dance. Yeah. And uh, it was 5 a.m. And I was just like rolling with it. Yeah. Um, but I, no, yeah. When, if I'm just like listening to music, you mm-hmm. know, you just kind of let your body f- do what mm-hmm. it feels like it needs to do. Yeah. How was dancing for Lakers? Dancing for Lakers was so fun. It was, it was definitely my whole life for like a year. Yeah. Um, it was like a bucket list thing though, no? Oh, for sure. Okay. Yeah. There was like four years ago, I you was a at Lakers a basketball girl. game. And yeah. so how it kind of all started, I um, grew up going to almost every single women's basketball game and men's basketball game with my grandpa. We sat like right behind Lakers? the bench. No, no, no. Um, uh, the Bucks. basketball game uh, for, oh my, the basketball game. <laughs> <laughs> the Badgers. The Badger game. Wow. Badgers? Um, the Badgers. The Wisconsin they, Badgers. Okay. Are they still a team? Yeah. Really? It's college team. Oh, college team. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, I don't know. UW, this. <laughs> University of Wisconsin. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Wisconsin Badgers. Diehard fan growing up. Okay. I there was a point when I thought I was gonna be like 
a women's basketball player. Like I was just like WNBA. Like that's the goal. Cause I was five years old and I was watching them play in college. And then you didn't grow. And then, (laughs) yes, I did not grow. And I also then shifted my perspective over over to the dancers when I'd go to the men's games. And I was like, oh, well, that looks fun. I can still like, be part of this like atmosphere. Yeah, and then I didn't go to college. I mm. came straight out here to dance, yeah. and so then eventually I was like back at a Badger game, like four years later, and I was like, okay, I feel like I I could do that for the Lakers. Like yeah. that'd be fun. What age did you come out here again? Eighteen. Eighteen. Okay. Yeah, yeah, eighteen, and so, um, like a week before the audition, I was like, I'm doing this. Hmm. Um, my roommate already had all of her stuff from auditioning for the Rams. And I was like, can I borrow your outfit? Cause I for didn't have anything. Yeah. I didn't have anything ready to go. And it was okay. like a week out and I was like, we're doing this. We're going to audition. Like you just decided out of last second. Yeah. Oh yeah. Cause they don't post it until like right before oh. like that the audition's happening. So it wasn't on my mind. What was the audition like? The audition, we started off with like a little over 300 girls. Oh shit! It's that many. Yep. Mm-hmm. Are they all dancers? All dancers. Okay. Some people to different calibers. Mm-hmm. Um, some people have danced in college. Uh, some people are professional dancers. Mm-hmm. Some people just graduated high school. Yeah. It's all different, kind of all different spectrums. Um, we come in, we do a technique mm-hmm. across the floor. So it's a little combo. You do some turns, you do some kicks, you do some leaps. Mm-hmm. From there, you are either accepted on. Or you were asked to leave, and, and they would do more cuts. Like yeah, so that's just the things. very okay. first cut to kind of like dwindle it down to people that can um, keep the technique mm-hmm. um, standard. They can keep up. They can keep up. Yes, exactly. And then from there, we learned a jazz combo. Mm. We did a cut. We learned a hip hop combo. We did another cut. And then we did like the classic, like, so you think you can dance kind of style thing where you stand in the back of the room. One person goes up at a time. Um, was that nerve wracking? Yeah, it was nerve wracking for sure. But growing up, I was set up for success okay. with auditioning sure. because um, at every dance convention I would go to, you would do an audition. And a lot of the times you would do that. You would um, go and you'd have to improv by yourself mm-hmm. Um doing solos all that stuff like gets you a little bit more in front of the crowd and then also I feel like something that's helped me is being the center of attention in a fitness room having to Mm. like speak in front of people and be confident in who I am and also like at the beginning when I was doing fitness I Mm. definitely didn't show my own personality I was like I need to be perfect I need to like be everybody's like guide Mm -hmm. and not show my personality and Sure. I've definitely like loosened up to that and realized yeah. that like it's a lot more relatable if you're just who you are. Yeah. Um, but so that's helped. Teaching a class is like kind of intimidating, you know. Yeah. Yeah. In, especially in the beginning. Do you ever think about this when you're teaching at all? Um, like as coaches, as fitness instructors, as personal trainers, you're responsible for these people's bodies. That, oh. One hundred percent. And they're like trusting that if their form is wrong, you're going to correct them or this and that. And like I've had people a couple times at 45 that hurt themselves. And I'm just like, it's hard to keep track of everybody, you know? Definitely. And you have to be like on. You have to. So there's that's one thing. I don't think everybody realizes um, how to become a good coach Hmm. for group fitness. Hmm. It's different than personal training. You can't just be uh, yeah. a personal trainer and then jump into group fitness and be like, totally I know different. exactly what I'm doing. No, it's very different. Um, one thing I've done to like improve my own. Can you own, explain the differences real quick? Yeah. So personal training, you're just, you just have your one client right mm-hmm. there. So you can correct them. You can take as much time as possible to start with the basic movement and then build and slowly teach them cor- correct form mm-hmm. to get them to the end result. Start without weight get them into that mobility, then eventually add weight, then get them to build their strength. Mm -hmm. You have that process in a group fitness class. Everybody's given the same movements and somebody might think they're Superman that day and just grabs the biggest weight and they don't even know what the movement is. Mm -hmm. So you as an instructor for a group fitness class have to have your eyes everywhere Mm -hmm. and realize each person's at a different level Mm -hmm. and help them in a nice way figure out where they're at that day and how they can push themselves that day in a safe and efficient way. Mm. 
So you're being everybody's personal trainer while also keeping that energy hyped, energy up, hyped up without overdoing that. Because sometimes yeah. you can be a cheerleader and you can overdo it and then everybody gets excited and then that's when somebody gets hurt. Yeah. So um, I have taken so many group fitness classes and one thing I yeah. do as I take group fitness is I observe the instructor mm -hmm. and I've learned from the best. Some of my great friends are some of the best instructors in LA. And yeah. so taking their classes all the time is truly where I've learned the most. Mm. I'm always a student. I'm always a sponge trying to figure out, Oh, I really liked their warm up. How mm. can I incorporate that into mine? Yeah. I really liked how they gave that person that cue. Mm. I really had like how they complimented that person mm -hmm. then helped them out and then gave them another compliment yeah. and then checked in on them five minutes later After, to make sure they were yeah. doing it right. There's the little variations things. are endless. Yeah. It's it's crazy because like every time that I think I, I was like, oh, I know a good amount. And then I'll take a class and be like, wow, that was sick. Like I'm going to yeah, use that. For sure. Because at the end of the day, you're just a combination of all the classes and all the trainings that you've done. You've done. Exactly. You know? And then being able to be personal, mm. like with people. A lot of the I think times, the biggest thing. a lot of the One times of the people things. love to share like everything. Yeah. And sometimes if you aren't able to like break that barrier and be like, I'm here for you, yeah. I'm here to be your, like your trainer, mm -hmm. they aren't comfortable telling you things. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden you find out that they had shoulder surgery like last year like, and, why do you you, tell and me, you're bro? like, what? But you have to make them feel comfortable yeah. to share this information because you don't know how sensitive it, mm -hmm. it is to talk about it. Sure. Um, for sure, like for injury, if it's something like that was traumatic, it might be hard for them to say like, hey, I threw out my back like mm. a year ago and I'm scared to do deadlifts. Yeah. But you want them to be able to be very upfront. So mm. um, being approachable is huge mm. as a group fitness trainer because if they're already nervous coming into class, and then they have to tell you that they've been injured. You need to make a way for them to feel safe in your space, mm -hmm. but also give them the opportunity to tell you. Mm -hmm. um, so going up to people and being personal, and being asking their them how personal they are. trainer yeah. in that class is so important. Mm. So that's why I currently love where I'm at because it gives me the time to make those connections, to help people out. Um, I don't feel rushed and I feel like I can truly are you help just people about build where you are right at FitStop. Yeah. 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 Come on, Aussie brands. Ooh, all the Aussie brands. Yeah. It's crazy how like Australia's literally come back. Shout out to LSKD. Let's go, LSKD. <laughs> we haven't even made it to LSKD yet. Yeah, let's stay, stay at the Ooh, Lakers for a little bit. Yeah. How how was um like you were at LeBron's like record breaking night? Oh my god, I almost cried. And I'm like, like I that's big. It was and you amazing. Were, you were like on the court. Yeah. And yeah. like you were there and that's the like a moment. That's a big part of basketball history right there. Yeah. Like a huge part. And I think what a lot of people don't understand that like weren't there in the moment. Mm -hmm. They see it on TV and they some people are like, "Ah, oh, you stopped an entire game mm -hmm. for this." Well, being there in person, it felt like you needed to. Mm -hmm. Like seeing an entire stadium come together and celebrate something and be in the moment together and just be so happy and excited, mm -hmm. feeling that energy, you don't feel that with other humans that often. Mm -hmm. And for everybody to just feel that joy and come together, like mm -hmm. if you don't even know the person next to you and you're like screaming, like looking at them, you're like, oh my God, that just happened. Yeah. It's a, just an awesome moment that that itself should be celebrated yeah. and like be given the time and mm -hmm. space. And then also like it was an awesome thing, like breaking records, mm -hmm like that you don't know if it's ever going to happen again yeah it's so cool it was a, an amazing mm. night i i'll remember it forever like grabbing the girl's hand next to me and i'm like oh my ah. god that just happened so cool what do you think the importance is of like i guess entertainment things like that because concerts right yeah or sports events it's just a ton of people watching grown fit ass men like throw a ball yeah. in a hoop or baseball or a concert this one yeah. person who has a really good voice just like belt out in front of like a whole crowd but like there's something about that experience that makes people want to do it over and over and over and over again and keep going and going and like yeah. sell out these stadiums like why do you think it's so attractive i think finding something you're passionate about and exploring it to the point where like you know everything about it which is a lot of the lakers fans they yeah. know everything they're so passionate about it yeah and being able to come and experience it in person mm -hmm. 
and then you get the hype of the Laker girls and you get the hype of the whole crowd, the lighting, mm-hmm. the the players, mm-hmm. you know, the, I think basketball players are like actors half the time. It's just like yeah. there's so much <laughs> drama that's happening on that court. It's amazing. It's very entertaining, especially being in person like there's there's times you they fell. I mean, they're a lot bigger than me, so it yeah. takes a lot more effort, but like guy falls three guys help pick him up like it's a whole (laughs) ordeal but like people being so passionate about something Mm. it makes your life so much more exciting Mm. it's those things in life that you find that like you want to invest in Mm. because it makes every day so much more enjoyable if like you aren't looking forward to your sunday night football like (laughs) What is your week for? Right? And yeah. this, it might be the same thing of like somebody like excited about an album drop. It's yeah. it's always just something that's like building hype in your life that like brings you joy, yeah. makes you smile, gives you like more endorphins. Yeah. It's also really cool to see people who are like good at their craft. Right? Oh, for sure. So if like an, that arti- talent. an mm. artist or a guitarist like just jam and you're like, whoa like and especially if you know how good it how hard it is to do that like for me i'll like mess around with the guitar yeah but when i see john mayer play i'm like how the fuck is he doing that oh or definitely or i could mess around and shoot a basketball at a park but then i see steph curry just like drain every three that like 10 threes in a row or something like that yeah i'm like how it's it's amazing it, it's inspiring in in such a way where like somebody doing something to the best of their ability Mm -hmm. will inspire you in a different way to do your own craft Mm -hmm. in the best of your ability. That's where for me being connected to different people and Mm -hmm. bringing community, Mm -hmm. that's what it does. Yeah. That I, that's why I'm such a big community person because I'm like the more people that I can connect with that Mm -hmm. inspire me, the more I can inspire them and the more we can create more together and move forward. And it's the same thing as like, um, you meet a teammate Mm. that is really good at something Mm -hmm. you suck at and you get to watch them every day, Mm -hmm. work on that skill and get better. And you're like, Oh, Mm. Oh, that's how they do that. Now you're inspired to maybe get better in that way. And mm-hmm. maybe you're better at something else that they suck at. Yeah. They watch you. Now you're both better. Yeah. How did your, yeah. Speaking of the, the kettlebell flips today. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly. A good example. Very good example. I'm like, job, there's, <laughs> you, you, maybe we'll show the ble- <laughs> bloopers of me trying funny. to learn that plate, which is, I was it. just throwing it, yeah. but eventually it came around funny. back to my hands. You're right. Um, so Kate, I was teaching Kate how to uh, flip a kettlebell forward, and um, we practiced with just like rubber plates, and the automatic thing. So I said, I was like, yeah, that was close, like for sure, that was a good job. <laughs> in my head, I'm just Try. like, I always say that. I don't know if it's a great thing to say for everybody, but I feel like it just encourages people that it's close enough that they'll eventually get it. Which yeah, it, which it, it, it it's one of those things where everybody says you're a great teacher, and you are because <laughs> it's you. like. You didn't just go, well, that sucked. Yeah. And now I'm like, no, I don't want to try again. It was like, that was great. I'm mm. like, it wasn't, but like, I want to do it again yeah. now because you said it was great. That is one and thing. I'm going to try again. I think again. that's like when you said learn from other coaches and stuff. Yeah. Um, I, I've been in a spot where someone told me like, oh, that's not great. And then I don't want to try again. Yeah. Like subconsciously that could be oh, like why I do that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's definitely like a, you learn how you like to get a correction. Mm-hmm. And if it's not, if negativity isn't growing, I don't think negativity is usually ever good in a mm-hmm. space like because I don't work well. If somebody's negative towards me, I don't want to br- like I don't bring out more positivity usually. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's just kind of like how I work. But yeah. it's exactly that. If you are positive, mm-hmm. and then you tell them how they can improve, <laughs> and then you're bringing a little bit more positivity. Yeah then somebody wants to try harder mm-hmm. and, and grow, you do have to have the like correction. Mm-hmm. And if, and if there is like a space mm-hmm. where there's growth, you have to tell them about mm-hmm. where they need growth. 100%. You can't avoid that, yeah. <laughs> but doing it in a sense of like, you have hope, mm-hmm. <laughs> you have hope that they're going to be optimism. better. There's some yeah, optimism. Yeah. And How did you start the, your fitness journey, I guess, because you came out here for dance purely, right? Yeah, um, I knew I was going to be a personal trainer once I turned 18. Okay. Um, so my, How did you know? Like, what do you mean? 
I had taken a strength and conditioning class or like functional fitness Mm -hmm. um, class in uh, junior year in high school. Mm -hmm. And I started lifting and loved it. Mm -hmm. I had also done classes um, at my dance studio. Mm -hmm fitness classes so i started teaching my own fitness classes Mm -hmm. at the dance studio they were a lot more like hit like zumba kind of style um and then once i had started doing strength conditioning i was like oh i love this like Mm. i want to learn more about this i'm seeing the changes in my body i feel great now i want to work out all the time i also had gone through like a breakup Mm -hmm. (laughs) and that was how i got through my breakup i was like i was at the gym all the time (laughs) high school breakups hit different oh they did i think it's because like it's your first exactly yeah and you're like well i can't just sit in my thoughts (laughs) so like i definitely was just like all right we're gonna go to the gym today we're gonna go run on the treadmill we're gonna go do this to avoid those thoughts and like through that you were inspired to like oh i want to help other people yeah like get through this yeah. yeah i found the gym and i was like i want to help other people find the gym mm-hmm. and like not, not necessarily use it in the way i did at at 18 years old sure. but to live like a healthier lifestyle because yeah. i um once i did start lifting mm-hmm. and i started um working out that was when um the summer i had one dancer of the year at mm-hmm. um tremaine dance conventions when i was like a kid mm-hmm. and i was like oh I changed my routine. Mm -hmm. I stuck with something. I saw results Mm -hmm. and then I got to my goal. Yeah. Why stop now? Mm. And being able to like pursue something like that and then, um, see the results. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, like I want other people to know, Mm. like there's other paths than like what you're, you're taught initially, like, um, especially dancers. Like Mm -hmm. we're not really taught to like strength train. Um, we're, taught more like do some yoga do Mm -hmm. some pilates that will help you but i saw benefits in both so Mm -hmm. um kind of exposing that to that industry as well Mm -hmm. is is definitely inspiring um to become a personal trainer yeah what's uh i guess your advice to someone who does not know anything about fitness and they have some sort of inclination to like, oh, I want to change my life. Like, where do they start? Like someone who has never touched a barbell, who's never been into a gym, who has a hard time controlling their diet. Like, Mm -hmm. where do they start? You start small. Small, okay. Yeah. So first things first, what do you enjoy doing? Mm -hmm. Moving your body. Mm -hmm. Let's say it's just going on a hike. Yeah. Okay, go on a 10-minute hike. Start small, like do a mile, Mm. do that once, get the benefits of it, like feel like how you felt after it. Maybe Mm -hmm. you feel like crap, but maybe the next day you're like, oh, I have a little bit more energy. Mm -hmm. Um, You have to start small. You have to do something that like you see some kind of reward in it Mm -hmm. and then slowly add on from there. Within like diet, you also want to start very small. So maybe Mm. like one little habit change. Maybe you like to eat really late at night. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe you cut out that one thing you eat late at night. And after like 21 days, Mm -hmm. all of a sudden you have this habit gone that you stop eating at 8 PM Mm -hmm. and you lose 10 pounds because those extra calories aren't there. Mm -hmm. But all you did is like, maybe like pushed up your snack a little bit. And it's just the small things that slowly add up. It'd be surprised like the small things that do add up. Like for for example, if you just cut out soda and you drink soda every day, like you could lose pounds. Exactly. I I cut out soda when I was in sixth grade. You drank soda? I, yeah, no I don't. Soda. No soda. No, what no. was your soda? Oh, what was my soda? Oh, I liked ginger ale. Okay. I liked, I mean, then I like my mom ale. like loves Coke. Yeah. So like there was like always like Coke cans. Like we'd have like seven up, all that like squirt. Yeah. My favorite Ooh, was always. I actually, I like squirt. I have like you ever squirt. had um, ting? So it's like no. um, the Jamaican like grapefruit um, no. soda. That was my favorite. Yeah. We went to Jamaica when I was a kid and like. I was obsessed since. And mm. so anything like so squirt like is like grapefruit flavor too. Oh, so I was okay. like always into that. But yeah. yeah, so once I like cut that out and started like seeing like little things like mm-hmm. that that I can like make a change, um, and seeing the benefits of even just like having more energy mm. and having days that like I knew I was going to be mm-hmm. working out at school during the day, going straight to dance and having dance until ten PM. Mm-hmm. I had to fuel my body in the right way mm-hmm. and starting that young has definitely helped me. Yeah. A lot keep of that. Now. Well, the thing is like a lot of people, they've been doing the same habits for like 
decades, you know? For sure. And so it's hard for me to relate sometimes when someone like can't do what you're saying right now. Exactly. Yeah. But I guess you could start uber small and just keep building and building. And it's all about accountability. Yeah. I feel like because I told everything, everybody I was doing 75 hard, it was like, all right, now I have five people that remind me every single day. Oh, yeah. I remind, that, I remind, oh, yeah. I, everybody I brings it up every time I see it. So, like, it's like I have no choice yeah. but to be like, all right, let's stick with this. Telling, you know? a, telling other people is a huge thing. Exactly. Yeah. So not being alone in it, even mm-hmm. if it's like you – you find somebody or some accountability group mm. randomly that like you don't have to tell anybody like mm. you're too close with if, if that isn't something like mm. you want to share if it's like a vulnerable thing mm-hmm. or just yeah just finding a group um finding somebody that you like follow that mm-hmm. like you just are inspired to mm-hmm. make a better choice that day yeah. maybe taking out some content that's making you uninspired mm-hmm. to make that change mm-hmm. uh little things like that what your yeah, it's also, what content you're feeding yourself yeah will help fuel you to get your to your goal yeah like if you just have all food content on instagram which hard. is very attractive when it people is. making all these dope food content oh, yeah. like it's very aesthetically pleasing and everything like it's the sounds the yeah. ASMR, I'm like oh my god this one's so good yeah. also having like like you're talking about with friends wise there's a lot of friends who i have in the hospitality industry mm-hmm if I said I was not going to drink for a month, which I have, usually it's like sober October. Mm-hmm. They're like, nah, dude. It's like, coming up. <laughs> like, yeah, I know. They're like, oh, dude, like you can't, you, you could have one drink tonight. Versus like right now, I'm like, oh, are, are you still not drinking? And I'm like, yeah, I'm not. I'm like, okay, sick. Yeah. And I think that is one thing that I've noticed because I've had plenty of times where I go out and I don't drink mm-hmm. and I'll tell people that. And if I'm not, like, doing 75 hard, they're like, oh, come on now. Like, you know, like, they'll, like, give me a hard time. But because of this, they're like, oh, mad respect. Like, mad amazing. Respect, like, oh. <laughs> and I'm just like, what makes a difference? I think that's definitely a stigma that uh, no, we, I definitely think it we is need a to though. get. There, there is a difference. But yeah. at the same time, it's like you should respect somebody's decision of what they're, to. Yeah. they're doing that night. You don't know the reasoning then yeah. or unless you maybe, like dig no, into 100%. it but i think that's definitely something like i've seen that uh-huh. difference in reaction after being like i'm not drinking tonight like why and yeah. i'm like 75 oh got it got it got uh, it it's really interesting just accepting people for like who they are and regardless exactly. of like they don't need to have a reason exactly yeah i had i heard this quote like a while back and just it was something along the lines of your reasoning because a lot of people will ask why and me mm-hmm. wanting to do the thing is a reason enough. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So like, oh, I Especially I'm... if you're like a stubborn person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like, like, oh, why are you working out? Why are you going... The amount of people who are like, why the fuck are you running at night in the mountains, dude? Yeah. No, I want to. Exactly. And that's a, that's a reason that's enough. That's enough reason. And like, there there's so many things that you could say that mm-hmm. like make them like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That would have... But you don't my need My 75 to. hard. I don't need to. You're just like, I yeah, want to. I want to do it. And then what do people say to that? They're just like, there's no... There's, there's no... Yeah, you can't they, counter. They, you can't. No, you can't it's counter. like, okay, that's how they want to like, live their it? life. Yeah. I think that's like a lot of, a lot of things that I encounter like if I hear somebody like making decisions, sometimes mm-hmm. I'll ask them why, but or I'm like... They want to live their life that way. Not that it's way. not my life. Yeah. They they can do that. It's like no judgment. It's not not affecting me. Yeah. How did you start your networking out in LA? Because I don't know if it was before when we met at F45 that you were working on it. Because you know, especially in the fitness space, an ungodly amount of people. <laughs> yeah. I think so. Like Wait, pretty much the, all the, the fitness people in crazy, LA, Caitlin knows. <laughs> the thing that isn't crazy is like my junior and senior year of high school, mm-hmm. like I was like a silent person mm-hmm. that like a lot of people didn't even know I still went to the school because I like didn't talk to anybody. That's shocking. Yeah. Like yeah. I was just not like I felt like I was always like holding my tongue because mm-hmm. I didn't either like agree with like the people I surrounded myself with mm-hmm. or I didn't have the same like values or views or um just was shy also like just didn't want to like share my own opinion and that's hard that's not something like 
it doesn't feel good to be like silent. So I was like, I want to find my people. Mm. <laughs> I want to find people that I can relate to. Mm-hmm. I can talk to, um, that I feel like are bringing value to my life and I can bring value to their life. Mm-hmm. So I started going to any and every fitness event that I found on Instagram, on fit girl club, LA on all these mm-hmm. different like Facebook groups. And so I started and you were just, searching for them. Were you searching? Yeah, for them? I was searching. Okay. So I started just like searching for different community events I could go to, especially as like a pro artist in LA at 18 years old, yeah. you're trying to find all the free things to go to sure. that are like fun, yeah. meet friends and there's um, a lot of get them. free workout. Oh, there's so many. And it's not in just in fitness. It's like so in anything, anything. Oh, I would go to uh, free coffee tastings on Fridays yeah? and it was at this like, um, coffee shop that was strictly for um educating people on Mm. different like brews of coffee um on like there's like that wheel you know like that is like for wine tasting Uh they had one for coffee tasting that's sick so my brother and i would go to silver lake and like do free coffee tasting Mm. free coffee that day something to do for the day do you think that's real what like the palate tastings and everything like that they all tasted different (sighs) yeah i get that but there's some reason like especially with wine i was like why is this one so goddamn expensive versus this one and i was Um, like also with coffee too like especially japan had a lot of crazy different coffees and they said oh yeah this one has like a little bit of anise and like with hazel and this and that i'm like how like (laughs) yeah it's all very interesting i have like a high respect for people that are really good at um sourcing their coffee from a good good place Uh because I know a lot of it is not not good Mm. or like the people that are actually farming that coffee are not getting enough money Mm. um so we learned all about that that's 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 too about these things but so yeah so I started going to like a bunch of like free fitness events that I would Mm. find and then slowly from there um you make a network of people that you meet at those events that mm-hmm. are now inviting you to the next event mm. that you didn't find. Yeah. Um, so you're going to the next one, go to Were the next. Were you still quiet going to these initial events? Yeah. 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 I don't. So how they... did you break out of that shell? Oh, I feel like that wasn't even until like more recently. Um, so I had met, um, Jameson, mm-hmm. um, so sh- that was when, Jameson. Woo, let's go Jameson. Um, that was when he worked with Roan. I had gone to those events and he would say it that I was definitely like the quiet one Mm -hmm. at those events. But then I slowly, slowly started realizing how much I loved when I'd get to those events and like I'd see people and like, I'd be like, Oh my God, I know you. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've seen you before. I saw you at that event. Mm -hmm. And it just made me feel like at home Mm -hmm. seeing familiar faces in LA in such a big city and like making a big city feel small. So then mm-hmm. as more and more people started like joining our community, mm-hmm. I started being the one that would welcome them and be like, welcome in. Like you're like, you're part of the family yeah. now. Like I, I want you to feel mm-hmm. just as at home mm-hmm. and feel like this community is for you as much as I felt it mm-hmm. was when I first joined in. Yeah. Um, so doing that started making me feel like I was, uh, I was just like more confident mm-hmm. in like, feeling like a part of something and when you feel a part of something it gives you the power of having a voice Mm. and feeling heard and being around people that allow you to feel heard is an amazing thing and it's hard to find i didn't know like these events existed until like i think the one that hit home of like what they can do was uh honestly the helix one yeah and i it was one of the first times that I was like, oh, these people are listening and they yeah. genuinely care in a, a big Hollywood um, world that yeah. like we live in. A lot of people are like me, 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 me. Right. Mm-hmm. And it, I was like, oh, should I can you want me to continue talking right now? Like you're interested in what I have to say. Exactly. And I was like, oh, this is dope. And they genuinely you know? like care because they're like, yeah. they're like, I, I want to learn from you. And you can learn from me yeah. and let's make this connection and let's see where it goes. Yeah, I'm super grateful for you because because of that, I work at Helix yeah. and that's done tremendous I mean, things yeah. for me. And I did the podcast with Jameson the next day. Yes, that was like, 
<laughs> such you never know what's going to happen. happen. You don't. From one experience. One experience. I've no. been connected. Um, I've been to an event that I met a person at an event. This is like when it was for Melon. Okay. Um, My the favorite girl, hats. Go check oh, them out. Yeah. <laughs> um, a girl that was teaching the class I had never met before, but she was from Minnesota. Okay. She knew somebody else that was then looking for instructors to go on her app. Mm-hmm. We we're all from the Midwest. She connected me. And then all of a sudden Just now I've worked. Event. Yes. Yeah. I've worked with um, Kelly with LuxFit mm-hmm. on like four or five different projects now. And I didn't even make that direct connection mm-hmm. with her at that event. It was through a third party. Mm-hmm. And now I have a, a whole new, new fitness fam uh, that I, I love working with. And mm-hmm. so you never know what is going to happen, what doors are going to open. But the great thing is it's not about you. It's about everybody moving forward mm-hmm. together and everybody is benefiting from these connections being made. And, mm-hmm. and also that's where I met all my friends, <laughs> <laughs> like, all my friends, all my LA friends. I love, yeah. I love the fact that it's a really that, good community that you've like felt. Yeah. I'm, I love the fact that they're all genuine humans that mm-hmm. we can have a great time together. Mm-hmm. We also all can work out together. If I wanted to get a workout in, I literally yeah. just hit somebody up and we're like, let's do this. Yeah. And it's, a, it's another like accountability group almost yeah. like sticking on, on track with your goals. And yeah. yeah. Do you think what's more important in your opinion, a skill set or like the networking of it? Like people say it's like who, you know, right. Mm-hmm. But also you have to be competent in my opinion to be able to do like a coaching job at like fit stop or something like definitely, that. Definitely. Definitely. So I think it's, um, a mix of both. You have to be willing to learn mm-hmm. from these people that, you know, mm-hmm. if you're making these connections and you're not absorbing anything that they're telling you, mm-hmm. or you're not like willing to like be a student mm-hmm. every time you meet somebody, every time you take a new class, then you're not going to get any of the benefits. Cause they're just like, Oh, you're great. It's great meeting you, but like, I don't see you really like connecting with me and like listening to me. It's that same thing. Like listening, if you're a sponge and you absorb it all and they see you Mm -hmm. taking the, the things they, that they told you Mm -hmm. and applying them to yourself, it's like, Oh, Mm -hmm. I know you're a good student. I know you're smart. Mm -hmm. I know you're good at what you do Mm -hmm. because you take correction well. And because you evolve to your environment. Mm. If you can't do that, if you can't evolve to your environment, you're mm-hmm. not going to be good in any job environment. Sure. You kind of you kind of have to do that in any space you are um to a certain point. Yeah. But having that skill is similar to networking. Mm-hmm. You you go to an event if you're really really unfamiliar, you're uncomfortable, mm-hmm. finding a way to adapt and change mm-hmm. um to be able to relate to people and connect during that event Mm -hmm. is a skill in itself. How do you, I guess like say they don't have the skill or they're not coming off as like open, right? Mm -hmm. Do you have like a strategy to like break into that? Like, yeah, I don't want to like get past that small talk. You know what I'm saying? Get past the small talk. Ooh. Uh, sometimes it's like, it's just natural because we're working out and like, you know, like you're doing something hard together Uh when you sweat together. It's just like, (laughs) The, all the barriers have been like sure. put down and you're just like, Oh my God, mm-hmm. that was great. Like now I feel like I have a connection with you. Yeah. Um, sometimes it does just stay with that small talk mm. and you're like, okay, cool. We connected today. Yeah. I see you, and you see me over and it develops over time. Okay. Or if it wasn't, not everybody is meant to connect. Mm. Not everybody is your person. That's one thing a lot of people say in LA. It's like everybody's best friends. No, it's like you find those genuine connections. Yeah. Um, and some people, They'll continue Mm. to develop and grow and blossom and you'll work with them in other ways. Mm -hmm. And some people it will, it will just stay like cordial. You connect here and there. Mm. You might do an event here and there, but you're not best friends. Mm -hmm. Um, so letting everything kind of develop in its own way and, um, valuing every relationship you have Mm -hmm. as something, whether it's a good friend, whether it's just an acquaintance knowing that is a relationship Mm -hmm. and if you want it to grow you need to nurture it Mm -hmm. i've been struggling doing that specifically because i think you correct me if i'm wrong i think we have both a lot of just like friends in la and we have so much time we don't have a lot of we have more friends who want our time than the time that we have 
Yes, in a way. Which, <laughs> <laughs> Does that make sense? Yes, but at the same time, I'm like... So, like, I feel bad, like, a lot of the time when someone's like, you want to work out? I'm like, I got two workouts already planned today. Oh. I can't work out with you. I'm so sorry. You know? Oh, definitely. I definitely understand that. I was like, you're making it seem like we're, like, really popular. No, that, that's like, not what not I meant. Not that. Not that. We have a lot of friends that, like, no, we're, like are busy. inspired by us and yeah. want our want our energy we have we, yeah. we are good at giving energy mm-hmm. to other people we are sure. givers in that I sense i didn't mean it like that yes. I'm no, sorry. I know, that no that's why i'm just trying to like say in the right way we're very we, egotistical we're very, people <laughs> <laughs> we are very I'm like joking. giving of yeah. our time sorry. and our energy mm-hmm. and that's we are good teachers for that reason yeah um but you can't give too much because mm. you need to replenish yourself. Mm. And also you need to be able to have the energy to give them if you want to meet up with them. Yeah. And if you're going to like be drained, mm. it's not worth it for them or you. Mm. So that's definitely something that that's a networking skill, mm. knowing I have to see each relationship that I have mm. as a seed that I need to slowly grow. Mm. And if I'm not, going to water this one Mm -hmm. it's gonna die and i'm maybe never gonna see that person again um i i do or is it just mental notes sometimes i'll literally like go through i won't even like look at stories but i'll kind of just like oh i haven't talked to that person in a while like i'd love to like go on a a Mm. work do a workout with them but i only do that when i um feel like i am recharged Mm. if i'm not recharged and i feel drained Mm -hmm. like that it's not worth it for either of us because I can't, I can't give them any yeah. nurturing if I can't give it to myself. So it's definitely a balancing mm-hmm. act. But um, I, I view that as like part of my day to day is like, all right, Just like keeping, who keeping can I? People. Yeah, who can I like yeah. keep up with today? I who think, can I work out with? Who yeah. can I? Um, because it it recharges me mm-hmm. to to see other people connect with other people. Mm-hmm and get re-inspired yeah that's a get big thing. inspired by somebody you don't know what conversation you're gonna have like we have conversations all the time mm-hmm. i'll be doing a set we'll we're, we'll be working out at the gym i'll be doing a set and he's like what are you thinking about right now <laughs> and i will literally be like brainstorming my next genius idea and he's like what and i was like you, you, whatever you just said like inspired me and like I, i'm on this after yeah. this and yeah. he's like what <laughs> and i'm just like yeah, I don't know what it was, but like that's cool. I'm yeah, glad that you never out. like you never yeah. know who who or what somebody's gonna say yeah. that's gonna like think, spark your next yeah, I idea. I think you just put that into like what I naturally do into words because my process for keeping up with people is, is you go you'll see a story and be like yeah. I haven't thought that. For me, if I see someone that I'm like oh I. I like keeping promises, right? So yeah. if I make promises, keep promises. You're like, very I, good at that. I think that's like one thing that i just want to be known for you've said that feel. before and i now like try to put that into my own practice yeah. cuz i'm like this is true so i have a list of people right yeah and i promised a couple guys like hey i'm i'm going to go golfing with you mm. it's 3 months ago but yeah. he, he's still on my list yeah. i'm like it, it's bugging me deep down that i haven't golfed with him yet so i'm just yeah. like fuck like let me figure this out yeah. or like i told kate two weeks ago that we should go on a hike mm-hmm. and granted i probably shouldn't have said it but i still said it so we should do i it. need to figure out how to get a hike in like yeah. i don't know why that's like in my brain to just if i say it it's a very valuable trait yeah. that a lot of people are flaky in yeah. LA because of the new shiny thing mm. that's around the corner, mm. the next opportunity that is going to come. So then they like halfway commit mm-hmm. and then they're like, oh, sorry, I have something better to do. Yeah. And you don't want to be that person mm-hmm. because people see it right yeah. away. And if you do it to somebody the next time they want to work with you, and mm-hmm. let's say they have a big opportunity that like both of you will grow together or even like just doing something fun. They might mm-hmm. just be like, ah, now they're too busy for me. I'm not going to ask them again. Yeah. When really like you may genuinely really love to be around this person mm-hmm. and you find like so much joy, like hanging out, mm-hmm. but you ditched them twice and now they're never going to want to hang out again. Yeah. I think it's just like a human psychology thing. Yeah. I don't I don't know the reasoning behind it. Yeah. What um is your characteristics of a good friend? I've been really thinking about and asking people like what 
what do you think a good friend has like characteristic wise like what, what makes someone a good friend i'd say mm, this is hard because i'm this is something i've been working on okay because growing up i didn't really have like i had a few like best friends mm -hmm but they were very distant mm -hmm. because I didn't go to the same school or I didn't do the same activities with them. So growing like genuine friendships, I've been learning what traits that I didn't have that mm. I would want to have. So being, being there, mm. somebody that's there for you when you need them, mm. which is the hardest thing, giving up something that you want so then you can help go support this person. Mm. I've had friends that literally dropped everything when I didn't have a car went and took me to dealerships, helped me shop for a car, helped me like vent on like what happened when I was in a car accident mm -hmm. and then like helped me pick out my new car and yeah, like go through those so options. The last two years. Oh, I know. It's, uh, <laughs> it's another story. <laughs> another story. <laughs> but they literally just dropped everything. That's awesome. And I, I think about it all the That's time. So I'm cool. like, they were there for me when mm. I needed them. And I need to, I need mm. to do that for people. Cause mm. that's when you know, it's real. Yeah. So loyalty and being there when, it, like when it's hard, mm. when it's, it's not something that's benefiting you, but it's benefiting this other person so mm. much that it makes you happy. Mm. Um, and being able to listen. Yeah. I feel like a lot of the times we all talk, we all, we all want to vent our own thing, but when it comes time, when you need to listen and like hear their side of things and just let them talk, it, that's sometimes harder than you think it's going to be. Mm -hmm. And just like being, being an ear to listen to what they have to say and not giving your own opinion mm -hmm. is very important. I like that. Yeah. Do you know who Simon Sinek is? I don't think so. He wrote the book like uh, why and leaders okay. eat last. He has this rule for a good friend. Um, if you're a good friend in his circle, he was like, you don't cry alone. Like mm -hmm. if, if you need to cry, you just call him and be like, Hey, I need to cry. Yeah. And you just listen and let them ball. Mm -hmm. Cause like, I think, I think dark, dark thoughts happen when you cry alone. Yeah. You know? Oh, for sure. I've definitely like growing up, like I didn't have that person Yeah. or like going through my very first breakup. Mm -hmm. I had nobody. Yeah. So I literally had to like, I was, I definitely like had those moments and then I had to like go to my mom. Like, Cause I was like, my mom is my person. Like, I mean, I, I call her that. like twice a day I still to this day, Come on. but like you need that person. And mm. I think I figured out how important that is and how much, yeah. um, I've relied on family for that. Mm -hmm. And like my family is very, very close. Mm -hmm. So like when I would have those moments, I I'd call them and I had a brother here. So like having family here, um, Shout I, out Bryce. Shout out Bryce. He's been gone for the last six months. Yeah, he's on a cruise. So, so I've been here yeah. alone. And I think that's when I started realizing I was like, I rely on just like being able to hit up my family members oh, yeah. to do things. You guys hang out a lot. Oh yeah. Like I'd go on hikes all the time. So yeah. knowing like, oh, I need to have people in my corner mm -hmm. for like when I go through hard times, but also yeah. being there for people when they go through hard mm -hmm. times because you, you want them there for you just as much as they yeah. want you there for them. 100%. That's cool. Um, let's talk about LSKD. Yes. Shout out to LSKD. I'm in the fit. In the fit. I'm wearing the shorts. Yes. You guys can't see it, guys. But honestly, it's some of my favorite shorts. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've, I, I've, I've bought a few things, and a lot of people, like, really fuck with their shit. Yeah. I mean... I love their stuff. It's I all I wear. Yeah. <laughs> all I wear. How do you, I guess, like, get your maven position? Can you explain what a maven yes. is? Yes. <laughs> so a maven is kind of like the the person, the ambassador okay. that's kind of like at the forefront of, um, here it's LA, mm -hmm. uh, helping be that person that, like, is um, spreading the word of the brand, yeah. spreading awareness, but, like, really really being like committed and like a team leader. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm the Maven for LA. So I do all their community events. Mm. Um, I have been bringing together amazing people, um, to connect and do fun things mm -hmm. together. And, um, with that, we follow the values of LSKD, which one of them is community becoming 1% better every day. That is our new mission before mm -hmm. it was chase the vibe. Now it's 1% better. Mm -hmm. And, um, as a maven, I 
live and breathe all the the values of LSKD. And that's, I think why I really, really resonate with the brand. Um, it, it's just such a cool group of people that are inspiring Mm -hmm. while also having gear that, that that makes you feel good about yourself. That makes you feel confident that putting on something that like you're proud of because you Mm -hmm. know, the people at the very top of the brand have a good head on their shoulders and are having, um, they're all about, you know, like being innovative and like being better and always improving yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what I do on my day to day. Move fast, break shit. That's what I do every day working out. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's all those things, but then also you're never bigger than the team. Yeah. That's a big thing. You you get yeah. into certain brands and you can see people at the top of them that that aren't necessarily in it for the right reasons mm-hmm. sometimes or um, see themselves as bigger than. Mm-hmm. And I think that's one thing that I love about this brand is like you're just one that is a part of the bigger wave, mm-hmm. the bigger wave of people that are inspiring others that are becoming better together. Yeah. You're not, you're not That's bigger. That's one thing I do like about the brand is because I didn't realize, I never thought about why I bought things. Like, why did I buy those Air Forces? Yeah. Right. I bought those Air Forces because I saw a, some like dancer who I like, like yeah. wear them. Or why did I buy this cocktail shaker? It's because I really fuck with like this bartender and the type of things they do right exactly. and so then i was like oh like i didn't buy lskd just because i like the gear and the quality because there's other brands out there who have just as good quality yeah but i like the mission i was like you know move fast break shit like the meaning behind it when jameson was explaining it or yeah. just the fact of one percent better every day like i've said like get better today in almost every single every, workout yeah. thing that i've done since I was 16. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, that resonates. Exactly. Finding a brand that you can resonate with, Mm -hmm. you would know that the people around the brand probably are people that you can get along with, Mm -hmm. that you can resonate with. And if they feel like they can support that, then you're you're in a good community. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's all about is community, finding connections, Mm -hmm. finding connections beyond just the clothing. Yes, you might be wearing the same thing, but it means something bigger. Mm-hmm. I see somebody in LSKD. I'm like, they're a good person. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I'm like, so, I like that. I like that. I like that. <laughs> and like, Which that's sick. Kind of that's cool. Or I, yeah. or I wonder. I'm like, oh, have I, have I seen them before? Or like, I wonder where they got that. You hear that, guys? Which, if you wear LSKD, Caitlin will think you're a good person. Go buy an LSKD. <laughs> Well, it's just, it's, if they're representing it, I'm because I know, I know. <laughs> if they're representing it, like yeah. you're representing something bigger. Yeah. And I think that's what's really cool mm. is it's the same thing. Like when I represent Fit Stop, when yeah. I represent um, Lakers, mm. you, you're representing a brand mm. and you should be proud of the brand you're representing. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Um, what has being the Maven, I, I guess, of LSKD LA like taught you? Because you're bringing all these people together and you're collabing with all these other big companies. Yeah. Right. And it's a skill set to do that. It's a Definitely. real big skill set to bring. I, I don't know. For example, when I brought, I don't know, all those people to San Diego. Mm-hmm. That was a lot on me, and I was like, "This is yeah. a full time job type of deal." And you do that; you were doing that like monthly for a while, and you still do events now. And I, it made me realize, like, Caitlin really brought like 30, 40 people together, like that, it, to agree for everyone to agree to meet at the same spot in this huge city to do a workout to support a brand. Like that's difficult to do. Yeah, there's a lot of different factors that like come into play that I have to think about. Um, I mean, I've learned from amazing other people that have built community and like watching them do it. I'm Mm -hmm. like, okay, so every time you do it, you have to add a few new, new faces, Mm -hmm. but also you got to have the people that bring like the good energy. Like the, the reason why we all like to come together is because you feel lighter you Mm -hmm. feel good you get those endorphins rushing you feel connected you feel inspired you feel like you're getting better that day Mm -hmm. so finding new people that like resonate with that Mm -hmm. but then also like keeping the connections with people that you're like i want you there Mm -hmm. and them knowing that like you genuinely 
enjoy them being there every time they show Mm. up and knowing that they're worthy and they are like, they are what makes the event something that is special Mm -hmm. and something that is worthwhile for all these people that are coming. Mm -hmm. Everybody matters. Every single person at the event matters. It's not about Mm. the clothing. You could do that anytime. It's not about the workout. You could do any workout and still have a good time. It's about who is there and who's connecting. And I think that's the biggest thing you have to remember, like as you're going into it, it's, it's making sure you're bringing a group, good group of people Mm that are there for the right reasons together. And also there, I mean, there's so many different factors that go into it. Mm -hmm. Um, especially in LA when like finding times where everybody can all connect together. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think making sure that the hype and the the energy is good every time you see these people, um, that's the bit, that's the biggest thing. It, It happens naturally. Because the, the coolest thing is, like, you not everyone's going to be having the greatest day. But during no. that two-hour thing, there's, they're having a great time no matter what. Exactly. And people will message me. They're like, oh, my gosh, I've been having such a hard week. And I'm looking forward to this workout so much. And I think that's what's uh, gotten me to, like, mm-hmm. really commit. Like, for the first few years I was going to these community events, I'd switch things in my schedule. I'd mm-hmm. make sure I was able to go mm-hmm. because it was the one thing I looked forward to. Mm. I was I was just another person attending, and like it was the thing that like made my month because mm-hmm. it'd be like once a month, and I'd be yeah. like, that was so fun. I think you're perfect for the job because like you literally were a fan of just events. Yeah, <laughs> and now. And they've done so much for you and you know what they can do for other people. I know people. what they can do for other, other people. people. And therefore that's why I like you're passionate about it. Like the biggest yeah. thing about like confidence in my opinion is like you can be confident in something if you've experienced it. Yeah. Right. So I used to not be confident in personal training until probably like two years ago. Yeah. Because I didn't see a lot of results from the, the clients that I had, like real, real good ones. Mm-hmm. And then like over the years, I'm just like, oh. This person lost 36 pounds in three months. What I'm telling them actually worked. Yeah. So I'm confident it works because it yeah. did work. Exactly. I did the same thing for me. Like, oh, I, I did these workouts. I eat like this way. Mm-hmm. My it body works. looks like this. Exactly. So now I'm confident that I can help this person. Yeah. For for you, like, you're so confident that these, like, the way you talk about these events mm-hmm. is so passionate and you, like, know it works. Yeah. And it's like, it's a beautiful thing. You're like, it could build community and community could lead to like these networkings and networkings could lead to everybody growing. It's, you it, know? yeah. It, the reason why I'm so passionate about <laughs> it, cause that's cause every job I have is from that. It's from community. Yeah. It's from, I currently all the places that I work, eventually I got an interview, like, but the interview wasn't because I applied. Yeah. It was I because the I, I an application for something. No, it's because I met somebody they, yeah. we started connecting, we started talking, they learned something about me. They're like, Hey, there's this opportunity. Mm-hmm. Would you be interested? And I think that's when you find yourself in the most genuine jobs that you can be because mm-hmm. they, they came to you because of who you are mm-hmm. and because of what you present yourself as. Yeah. And so then it's, it shows you and then you, work you with didn't chose it. Yeah. And then you work with people who are like, like-minded. Exactly. And yeah. you see your coworkers more than you see your family. Uh-huh. And so therefore it, it just works out. Exactly. Yeah. And, and then you're eventually working with your friends, mm. which that's all you can really ask for. That's all right. You can ask for. Then it doesn't feel like work. I, yeah. I feel like that's one thing with the career path that I've chosen with dance and fitness, mm-hmm. like, it, no day unless unless I overdo things yeah. doesn't feel like work. Yeah. Not at all. I, Is it I, doing what you love? Yesterday, I was just telling you, yesterday I taught seven <laughs> classes. That last class was one of my favorite classes I've ever taught because I was just... What's up? I was just there to have a good time. Yeah. I was there to feel everybody else's mm-hmm. energy, to get my own energy up. Yeah. It was... I had been working since 4.30 in the morning and it was yeah. now 6 p.m. and... I was on to my seventh class and it was great. Yeah. I was like, wow, this well, really fuels where me. Did, where does your, I guess, motivation come from working? You work hard. Like you really do. Cause like when I think about it to, I don't compare myself too much, but like, I'm like, I believe I'm a hard worker and I mm-hmm. lack sleep and do all these things. But like when I see you do all your things, it's like, 
fuck, dude. Like, she's killing it. Like, I got to keep up, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, I blame it on the fact that I've always been like that. Like, okay. It has like to come from growing, somewhere. Yeah. Growing up, um, dancing, uh-huh. like, you finish school, mm-hmm. you go straight to dance. Mm-hmm. Um, if I didn't have dance right away, that was because I was then starting to teach. Mm. So I would go straight from school to teaching. Mm -hmm. Um, And then you'd be working and I was very passionate about my dance team and doing Mm -hmm. well and I was very competitive. So that work ethic like just came and I was always Mm. that teacher's pet kind of person that I wanted to be good. I wanted to like um, define that. And then I started traveling with a performance uh, program, Mm. Tremaine performance program. Within that, I learned how to be a good worker. be very professional Mm -hmm. you're working with dance moms yeah (laughs) that they're they're going crazy so that's that's crazier than anybody else you're gonna be human guys different breed of human there's (laughs) you don't know what's gonna happen next in that dressing room um it wasn't that a show dance mom oh yeah yeah you can go watch that to educate yourself on what a dance mom does (laughs) um but working with that i would leave um i wouldn't be at school on fridays uh i would travel to a city Mm -hmm. i'd be working from 6 a.m till sometimes two in the morning because we had rehearsal yeah how does someone and then like do the same thing every weekend and then as soon as i'd get home on sunday night i'd fall asleep because i'm exhausted Exhausted. from the weekend go to school the next day that's the best sleep though when you're exhausted and you just knock out the amount of pictures i have after dance conventions passed out out in a car it's embarrassing (laughs) (laughs) my mama always always bring them up got those yeah, yeah. they're all over facebook if you want do you to have any them. advice on anyone to develop that work ethic or motivation to like just push and push and push and keep chasing the things that you're doing because it's uncommon have a reason why you're doing it hmm. have a why have an end goal and know because these like now it's like okay i'm not competing to be the best dancer at a competition i'm not competing anymore but i'm competing for jobs Mm -hmm. so everything i do and every choice i make i need to know how it's bettering me to get to other goals so Mm -hmm. i have to set those goals all right like um i want to um i want to get this certain dance job i want this audition to go well i had an audition last week that i knew about it months in advance and i was like I know right now I don't feel good. Mm. I want to feel good when I go into that room and I want to be as confident and as I can be. One reason why I did 75 hard. Mm-hmm. All right. So now what choices am I going to make now that I wasn't making before mm-hmm. that are going to get me to the place and the headspace I need to be mm-hmm. in that room? So I started taking more dance classes every week. I started um, getting my endurance up. I started eating better. I started getting more sleep. All of those things are going to make me just more confident. Mm-hmm. I might look the same. Mm-hmm. I might dance the same. But, but mentally, something will be different. I'm ready. You're ready. I'm ready. Yeah. So, and that could be the biggest switch, right? Like, yeah. Just your confidence in your brain of like, oh, I know I'm going to kill this. Versus like, you probably have the same skill set. Everything else is like the same. But you don't have that like, I'm going to kill this mentality. Exactly. That confidence in yeah. yourself. And I think that's the biggest thing for me is I can... I can um, let my confidence waver, mm-hmm. and once it does, that kind of freaks me out because I'm like, oh, shoot, when I'm in the moment, I'm in that spotlight, I know the eyes are on me, mm-hmm. I need to be in my 100% like best self mm-hmm. where I can just ignore any of that pressure and feel good because at this point, that's all I can do is do my best do your best and being able to be in that position yeah. and like not let the nerves get yeah. to you is, and knowing is that you the, did your best exactly exactly yeah. and knowing you did your best it's like all right well if i didn't get it it wasn't meant to be hmm. but if you know you didn't do the work that does not feel good it does not feel good it doesn't feel good no yeah i feel like it eats you yeah you just like if you didn't get the job you're like oh, i could have done better yeah and that feeling just like oh. I, I definitely think um, in the past I've been like a perfectionist. I think I probably talked about that on the last time we had our podcast. Mm-hmm. I was like trying to break that. And I've definitely like gotten past that point mm-hmm. where I'm like being perfect is boring. Mm-hmm. 
That's not the goal. Yeah. If you're perfect, that means you're not taking risks. Yeah. If you are messing up, that means you took a risk. Mm. And that means that something beautiful might happen once you get it right. Yeah. And I think that was like the biggest thing for me. Um, growing up, I thought I had to be like this perfect, like everything I said, I need to be like professional mm -hmm. when I'm working and I always need to just like have the right answer. Mm -hmm. And I was not relatable. It didn't make me a better coach. It yeah. didn't make me a good friend, yeah. but not being perfect and being real and like letting myself like get better at my craft yeah. in a way of failing first and yeah. then finding the right path also, helps so much. Also like you meet all these people who are really good at what they do and the most of them are relaxed. So relaxed. <laughs> they're like, it's amazing. I love they're it. Very chill. So chill. And they, they might be able to send a professional email here and there, but when you're in person, they're like, yeah, don't worry about that. Let's yeah. figure it out. Like, but you know that they're passionate mm -hmm. about what they want to do 100%. and they have that path and that goal. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where everybody has their own path mm -hmm. and you have to be willing to make changes to your path to get to that end goal. Yeah. If you have a strict path that you want to pave, it's going to be so much harder to try to get there because mm. you also might not meet the right people if you make decisions that are just about being perfect. Yeah, because most no one is. <laughs> we've, we've definitely gone on the wrong paths on hikes and it's probably fun, beautiful things. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or not beautiful things and you make a better choice the next time. <laughs> yeah, me and Kate went to a hike and we got lost and Ubered back and it was like a 30 minute Uber. Yeah, it was great. It was cool. It was, good. It was a great it's time. It was a great hike. It was a great time. We didn't have water, but we, uh, we survived. Do you after. ever do that? I've been trying to figure out like boundaries, not boundaries, limits, your own like mm. personal limits. So, yeah. like, I went. I think 31 days of like four hours of sleep just to see like to see if you could do it how far I could go until I get sick right Interesting. and so it was like around like 30 31 days and then I was like okay I can push my body like 10 days and like I know I'll be okay or like the water that's why I don't do water I'm like how far can I push my body until like mm. it break breaks down so the, the night hike around mile eight is when I started cramping up I was okay. like okay I could do eight miles like very hydrated and mm -hmm. be okay. So I know my limit there. Yeah. And I don't know, it's been a fun game. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. I'm like, there's some, <laughs> this sounds like, you know, like those boxers that like, they completely like cut like right before their fight and they sure. get so dehydrated. Yeah. But that's, there's some benefits to like knowing your limit, but yeah. also like <laughs> hydrate, Nate. <laughs> Drink water, bro. Drink water. Um, yeah, I feel like there's different things that like I will like test my limit. Mm. I will say like well, when we did that, we we did that fast. Okay. Um, oh, the other day, yeah, I did weightlifting for sure. There was one week that I like put 200 pounds on that bar. Yeah. I did like one good rep, one like not so good rep, mm. but I was like first time doing 200 pounds the next two weeks later mm -hmm. i did it again and i got my three reps solid like case the small good. girl you can't see her guys like 200 pounds is like yeah. extremely strong it, yeah so <laughs> <laughs> somebody replied to my video and said that was not that heavy and i was what? like for my goals it was heavy yeah. so that's it don't compare yourself to other people or let other yeah. people tell you what heavy is that's another Side note. Yeah, don't listen to me. It's not that heavy, guys. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, and then I tried adding more on, uh -huh. and I knew my limit, yeah. and I'm not, mm -hmm. I know my risks mm -hmm. and what the rewards are yeah. to that risk. Um, so knowing when you can push yourself, mm -hmm. and then knowing when, okay, like, I, I'm, at, I'm, I'm at a point. Yeah. yeah. What about the fast? You were about to say about oh, the fast. Oh, we, we did that um, 24, 24 hour. hour fast. I felt so good the rest of the week. Yeah. And so then like that whole entire rest of the week, I already do like a bit of intermittent fasting. Mm -hmm. um, usually just like 12 hours, not the full 16. Mm -hmm. um, I had done like the 16 the next few days and I felt so good. I yeah. had more energy. I felt like my hunger went down. I was also drinking a lot of water though. So mm -hmm. um, I realized being hydrated making made me less hungry. Yeah. Made me realize how dehydrated I usually was. Yeah. Um, do, do you ever think about the, I guess the ancestral primal part of fasting? 100%. Yeah, it's because, like, food wasn't accessible to humans, no. like, every time you were hungry. Exactly. And... It's not natural. It's not natural. And I... 
it, it's not like always a, like a good thing but like sometimes when I like find myself like indulging I'm just like this could be creating cells that you don't want or like cells that aren't good because mm. you're not feeling yourself in the right way mm. and why would you want to add to your body something that could cause you to be sick mm. in the future yeah um so that's definitely Dang, that's something I, don't, yeah. I definitely don't go there but that, i mean so, it's accurate yeah, though yeah, yeah. so there's accurate. there's a lot of um autoimmune disease in 100%. my family and um i see my mom go through it mm. and having to take medication every day and so it randomly just happened one day that she um was really, really, really sick to mm. the point where like, if she didn't catch it and if she doesn't take her medications, things could go very wrong. She'll end up in a hospital. I know. Um, so knowing that like things can switch really fast if you don't treat your body and, um, try not to give too much stress on your body, which eating too much or like, uh, not eating correctly can cause inflammation mm -hmm. in your body cause inflammation, um, through your lymph nodes, mm -hmm. through, um, your immune system, mm -hmm. I try to avoid that. Yeah. <laughs> so like that, those are some things that go into, mm. um, how I make those decisions and, and exactly fasting helps you flush any of that inflammation out. Any of that bullshit. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's definitely one thing that I'd, I'd want to push myself mm. a little bit more. I have a cousin, um, who is, uh, finding natural ways to fight breast cancer. Yeah, sure. And so she does a lot of fasts. She'll do 72 hour fasts. Have you done 48 yet? I haven't. I need you to. You down? I'm down. Okay. <laughs> We're give committing right here. <laughs> give me a couple weeks. Okay. Um, my mom wants to do 48 and a couple of my friends want to do 48. Yeah. I feel like the happy number, the 24 hour I had, I think like seven people do it with us. Yeah. I feel like when you have five people, it's a good amount to like keep each other accountable. Definitely. When I wasn't in your group of accountability people, so I only had you. Okay. So, <laughs> so next time we should make a group chat. No, okay, group chat. Yeah, group chat for sure. Um, because when you say you're hungry with other people, like, I'm hungry too, dude. We got this. Exactly. And exactly. just that, that mental helps. knowing that someone else is doing it too. Yeah. Like someone you're like, else they is can suffering. do it, so why can't I do it? Yeah. It helps. These it definitely helps. These random three older ladies from F45 who I haven't trained in a while joined us. Oh, amazing. And they're like... Let's you do it know again. what's crazy? This is like kind of a side note, but yeah. like similar thing, mm -hmm. like where random people are joining in and like mm -hmm. inspired. Um, I was downtown LA at uh, in the arts district, and there was a random um, F45 member that I was like, I know you, and she was like serving me, and she's like, drinks on me tonight. Like I I remember you. I love she you. Was like. It. Um, redhead carly oh oh no it was at a brewery yes brewery um, um casey 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 yes. i love casey i love casey and i literally remembered that as soon as i looked in her eyes i was yeah. like i remember you and like She's i awesome. love you and like it's just such a cool thing like yeah. how you connect as somebody's coach and and seeing like how you connect in yeah. different ways and it's just that when you're doing a fast together it's a different connection yeah, yeah. honestly f45 has brought me so many good things in life just oh like for sure the, the so jobs, many different like that yeah connections the amount of people at my current bar right now who are like coach nate i'm yeah. like you're like how'd you it's just like, it's, it's a little like, different yes. for us sometimes because like it was one of us in 36 in class. Yeah. But like, as soon as you like, remember, you're like, Oh my God, you were, you gave me so much joy every day. Like yeah. I remember your smile yeah. or like different things like that. It's, yeah, that's it's a cool thing connection. Too, like it's early in the morning, they're grinding, but like you have a smile on their face. Therefore they have a smile on their face. Exactly. You guys are yeah, you're connected, connected in that way. Connected for life. <laughs> How's, uh, you just made a big step the other day. I did. You're a business owner, technically. You're a business yes, owner. What's LLC, it called? See, Connect Beyond Con Creatives. Connect Beyond Creatives. Yeah. What was uh, the reasoning behind that name? So I am huge on community, yeah, as we've we already about talked yeah. about before. And I love hosting events, yeah. as I've talked about before, classes. But I want to have a community that goes beyond just the connection you make in class mm. goes beyond the connection you make to your body in class, the connection okay. you make to your mind in class or at the event. And so really finding that and honing in that it is a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. It goes beyond the classroom. It goes beyond the event. I want you to take home everything you learn while you're in that environment and connect with other people, connect with your body, 
always. Mm. So in your life, you make choices. You need to make those choices consistently to make make a difference. Mm. And I think living a healthy lifestyle is is hard. There's Mm. a lot of things that go into it, but the more people you have around you, the more connections you have um, of people that are making those choices, Mm -hmm. the easier it is. So I want... So um, what would the purpose be of the company? The purpose would be to connect like-minded people that want to live a healthy lifestyle. And how how are you going to do that? I am going to be hosting classes Mm -hmm. starting out um, and events that bring all different types of wellness, um, dance. I've had so many people that want to take dance classes. You're Sign in. me up, coach. See, this is this is <laughs> dance classes that they don't know where to start. Yeah. They, it's an uncomfortable thing. Like if you've either so never danced, yeah. or, or you've danced in the past, you need a comfortable environment, a safe yeah, space. Safe space for sure. Yeah. So starting off with um, different ways of being creative. Mm. Me, when I'm in a creative space, I feel so good. Mm. And so allowing people to feel creative within their bodies, within their movement, trying new things. So uh, yoga, I'm getting my yoga certification. Yeah. Yoga, dance, um, hit style training as well. Mm. Um, but then events that connect people, mm. um, allow people. Like, so what people, you're doing now, but to exactly, like a, 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 a deeper different, level. A deeper level. Yeah. Um, seeing people experience ice baths for the first time and and doing something hard yeah Yeah. and you make a different connection with somebody when you do something hard and so being able to create an environment Mm -hmm. where people get to experience all those things um and be more creative and grow Mm -hmm. from it yeah, ice baths too. It's similar to fasting. You're like, you good, bro? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you You're got like, 30 more uh, yeah, seconds. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. That there's there's so many different um, styles of connecting your mind and body mm. that a lot of people have never tried, and it's yeah. so cool being in a room of everybody just breathing mm. together. So. And the thing is, you know the result of it because you've gone through it. You've I've done gone it. through it. Therefore, like people buy confidence. People. Yeah purely buy off like the way you talk about it no you only could talk about it that way if you experienced it exactly you know exactly and i think that is definitely something where there's so many people that ask me Mm -hmm. oh well where can i do this you're doing this well where can i do this and Mm -hmm. i'm like i want to confidently give you an answer that i believe in Mm -hmm. and that i know you're going to get the result you want Mm -hmm. and when you can't say that or find a different source Mm -hmm. to give to somebody it's your job in the community to fill the hole and so i've been asked different places to take non-hot yoga different places to take a dance class different places to connect with like-minded people there's so many places out there that have one or the other but bringing a good group of people together and connecting together mm. and trying new things in a safe space is what I want to provide for my community. And I feel like so many people have asked you and you're like, I'm just going to do it. Exactly. It's like, I'm just going to provide the answer. Exactly. Because like, I feel like you wouldn't have done it if like you didn't see a demand in it. That's, that's exactly why I am like finally like, all right, Let's do we're this making thing. it happen. We're making it happen. We're doing it because hey. I send other people in other directions yeah. and sometimes I'm not, I'm not 100% not confident. like confident that that person is going to show up in the way that I think the people that I am close to or the people that I want to provide a service Mm -hmm. to should. Mm -hmm. You need that extra, you need that extra care Mm -hmm. given to every single class. Intention for sure. That's, I'm excited for you. Yeah. I'm I'm excited to make it happen. uh, The, were you nervous when you got the LLC and everything? Because like LLC means real. Like you have a yeah. EIN number. Uh huh. You have a tax ID number. You I have, have it a bank account set. that it's a separate uh, entity from like your own human. Yeah, yeah. I, I will <laughs> say like I have done this so many times. I've gotten to the point of almost making an LLC and then being like, ah, oh, do I want it to be called that? Yeah. Nah. And then like going through the process mm-hmm. of like finding something that like feels genuine that isn't just like my name because mm-hmm. I, I don't want it I, I've had Caitlin Moyer fitness I'm like but it's not about me mm-hmm. it's it's beyond that it's yeah. bigger than that mm-hmm. it's not I don't want to be the person that has to be there because mm-hmm. I know there's people that are a lot better yoga instructors a mm-hmm. lot better 
creatives mm-hmm. than I am. And I want to share that with my community. Mm-hmm. I want this to be a way for me to bring other people in my community to the spotlight and mm-hmm. show how amazing they are yeah. and connect them to the other people yeah. that haven't been able to experience mm-hmm. that experience that I have had mm-hmm. before. So once I was like, connect, and then I was like, it's bigger than that. And I was like, beyond. And I'm like, all right, we're all creative. All right, here we go. I believe in this. Yeah. That's so dope. What does creativity do for you? Creativity. Oh, there's so many things. So I was just, um, in Wisconsin Mm -hmm. and, um, I choreographed for my dance studio that I grew up going to. And when I'm in that space, that's like one of the main times where like, I have to like get choreography out in four hours, like an entire dance. I have a high expectation for myself. Mm-hmm. I also want it to be better than like the last time I did it. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like that's when I'm in my most creative space. And I'm like, whoa, there's so much going on in my mind. Mm-hmm. And I get to see it come to life. Sure. And so when you see something that you thought of that come didn't to exist that before. did not exist, yeah. it was just in your head, come to your vision and you, you get to see it happen. It's so inspiring. Cause mm. you're like, well, what if I really like honed it on this more often? Mm. What if I practiced this creativity? What if I was mm. in a creative environment more than once a week, I would be a better person and I'd feel full. Mm. I'd feel like I am giving, doing what I was made to do and giving my peace. Mm-hmm into society, into my community. Mm -hmm. So having a space where people feel like they can be different, Mm -hmm. test the boundaries, not just go along with what everybody does Mm -hmm. and what the standards are and try to change it and continuously grow together. I think that's what it's truly means to, to be a creative, to be an artist. It's like putting the work out into the world for other people to resonate and appreciate. Yep. And by doing that, everyone grows in some way. Exactly. That's one thing I love about like training and classes and everything like that too, because you're giving part of yourself to make other people better, yeah. but also it's it makes you feel so good. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of selfish sometimes. It, it oh definitely. I I think about that all the time. I'm like, did I have more fun than they did <laughs> during that class? Cause there's times when I feel like it's definitely true. Sure. And they're like, we hate you. Like that was that was. <laughs> so hard and I'm over here like that was awesome yeah. you guys' energy like filled me up the rest of my day because yeah. it is selfish in a way like mm. I'm like you feeling like you got something out of mm-hmm. what I gave you mm-hmm. I, I was filled up mm. I felt like I did my job I did what I'm here to do mm-hmm. and if you're doing what you're here to do every day yeah you're on the right path. On the right path. You're on the right path. Yeah. Do you do, do you dabble with anything that is also creative? Like, for mm-hmm. example, for me, like I just been messing around with like poetry or messing around with what I can do with rubber bands yes. or like juggling and shit like <laughs> yes. that. I'm just yeah. like, oh, I'm gonna uh, figure this out. Like, oh, what, do you have? Do you have for any? For sure. Yeah. I like, especially during COVID, like the amount of, um, paintings I did that my mom was like, can we finally throw these away? <laughs> Cause there, we, I literally okay. go and watch like Bob Ross. And I'm like, and paint. Paint. I love mm. painting. What do you love um, about it? It's like so therapeutic. In what way? Seeing my, what I'm thinking or like something that I'm seeing my mind mm-hmm. get put into onto a canvas it's just like i'm releasing it's Mm. i'm releasing whatever that was a lot of the times i will paint the ocean (laughs) so you could see how that's therapeutic i'm just like painting something i enjoy i like to see um why the ocean it's my happy place ocean's yeah that's why you want to move to the west side that's why i want to move to the west side yeah definitely every time i look out in the ocean especially this is why i love surfing even though i'm not that great at it is um uh, it's like endless and there's so many unknowns right so exactly. you, you look down and you're like there's a different world down there or like you look out and you're like yeah yo you're so small and the things that you do exactly that matter to a certain extent but also but your, little, your, your little your tiny problems don't yeah if you were to just 
take a moment and sit there for an hour nothing is gonna nothing's gonna explode nothing nothing's bad's yeah. gonna happen you may be late for something mm -hmm. but the bigger picture is like do you feel better mm -hmm. yeah now, now I feel a little bit a little bit more energized a little bit more rejuvenated inspired mm -hmm. again to go do what I'm supposed to do and I think that's definitely something that I'm trying to be better at mm -hmm. is finding my time to take a break mm -hmm. and get my creativity back and be re-inspired mm -hmm. and really feel like restored and reset um and that's why going on hikes like people are like oh you're being active you're going on like a high well, no it's like it's, i it's get me time yeah it's me time it's time that i am inspired i feel small mm. i feel like i'm you just look little down on off. la yeah and you're just like all these people are in their cars they have their exactly. own things going on and i'm just sitting here yeah I, or i'm hiking up here <laughs> yeah i think it's i compare it to like it's a god eyes view like yeah you're just like oh you're looking down and you're like hey the problems that you have right now are are small are small compared to what what it could be, yeah, what it could be. or there's ways to get over that mountain yeah and find your way Physically. back to the valley <laughs> what are you um, most excited for in your life right now oh what am i most excited for definitely connect beyond creative okay. I'm, I'm excited to do something that is fully mine and be um be passionate about bringing people together yeah. that I started. I feel like it just, it's something where like you have to have that trust in yourself. Yeah. And I, I've always been like, Oh, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. But I feel like I'm such a person that needs validation mm. and I've found ways to not need validation. Mm. Um, through, By, through, through not being not or trying not to be perfect sure. and like showing up in a way where I'm like, I feel good. Mm -hmm. I might not like look how society says I should look right now. Or, mm -hmm. um, I show up in a way where I'm like, I feel good, but that person might not think I look good mm -hmm. or like feel or not letting other people, um, judge what I post mm -hmm. even like yeah. in a, in a social media yeah, kind that, of sense. That's a hard spot too, because like, it's hard to just not care. Yeah. Cause I'm fully. like, I'm not not caring, yeah. but it's like, but you're, you're, I'm only giving my opinion. Yeah. I'm not taking the, the other people's opinions in when it doesn't matter. Yeah. When it isn't healthy for me sure. to take it in. Yeah. Like the biggest thing is I wear the things I like to wear. And if you don't like what I have to wear, I'm like, Oh, I like it. Yeah. But it doesn't matter. Exactly. It's not that it deep. Doesn't, no, it's not that deep. Obviously, there's things that are like okay. There's like learning mm -hmm. that you can, um, you can you can take other things from other people, mm -hmm. and like you can take comments and learn from it what you shall. Mm -hmm. But finding a way to fully put my ideas out there and having trust in them mm -hmm. is probably the scariest thing you can do, but the most exciting thing you can do because probably the most fulfilling once it happens too. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. If you and need you, help, you if you ever need help, let me know. Oh, for sure. I will definitely be asking you all the questions. Sweet. Um, where can everyone find you? Where can people train with you if they want to do personal training? Where do they uh, talk? Where they, can they find you at FitStop? What yeah, days? Yeah, yes. Uh, you can find me at Caitlin, um, C-A-I-T-L-Y-N. That's a C, guys, not a yeah, K. Yeah, not a K. And it's a Y-N <laughs> dot M-O-Y-E-R, Caitlin dot Moyer on okay. Instagram. Um, connect Beyond Creative on Instagram will be live soon. Okay. Not yet. Um, I train at Fit Stop Monday mornings. Santa Monica, noon. guys, if you're on the Santa west side. Santa Monica, yes. Um, and also Wednesdays and Fridays. I'm also at Health House Wednesday I evenings. About Health House. We can't forget about Health House. No, and <laughs> Sundays. Um, and then, yeah, you can hit me up for personal training. Um, I currently am doing mainly house calls, mm -hmm. but I'll come to a gym near you. Yeah. Um, for... I guess the events, the things that you're so passionate about, yes. um, and, uh, the create, sorry, one more time. What, what is it called? Connect beyond creative and connect beyond creative. Like how for the people who want to get into these events and like are striving to find a community who feel lost and do all these things, like how can they get involved with the things that you're currently doing and the things in the future as well? Definitely. Uh, hit me up, 
DM me. Let me know that you're interested in being a part of my community because I know everybody has a piece of the puzzle, mm-hmm. and it is all about the big picture. So I'd love to have you in it. Um, if you hit up um, lskd.usa, mm-hmm. um, they're a great place to get connected, see what's going on in the U.S. for LSKD um, community events. Um, and yeah, honestly. Um, I post all the time about different events that have happened, um, and I'm always just looking to meet up with people to see if they're a good fit to join our community. Sweet. Yeah. Thanks for coming on, Kate. Yes, it's, thank you for it's having been awesome. me, Nate. I'm it's excited. Been so fun. I'm excited for the next couple of years, and yes. we'll have you on again. For sure. All right. See you all. Have a good one. See ya. Bye.